Good morning, students. In this section, we are going to be talking about what you need to understand as a resolution therapist. All of these things that you're learning are extremely important in the end result of what you are trying to achieve when you work with other people to help them awaken as well. And so one of the things that I want to talk to you about today is really your understanding that there are themes that are running throughout this planet. And as the human family, there are things that we get caught up in. But if you look at them, it's very interesting that you will see patterns to these themes. So there are themes of darkness and there are theme patterns of light. And so let's talk about those. The themes of darkness are within ourselves feeling blocked, feeling worthless, feeling we are alone, feeling hopeless, feeling purposelessness, feeling powerlessness. All of those things are themes that run rampant in the human family. As a therapist and someone who does healing work on people, I know this to be true, not just simply from reading or uh, from common sense of, you know, just watching the world and how things are, but actually physically talking to people in my healing practice and hearing these feelings over and over again. And so they are themes of darkness and the offshoots of these themes of darkness is violence, heaviness, chaos, injustice, division and inequality. Now I know that you can look at the world right now, no matter when you are watching this, no matter what year you are watching this video, you will see the same theme patterns running throughout the world. And they are the darkest side of the human family. They are the, the darkest experience that we as a human family experience. And we harbor some of those internal things into our human form, into our brain and our subconscious. And we, we interact with the world based on some of these themes. And so becoming resolute with the light means that you have to acknowledge what these things are. You have to acknowledge that they are simply themes on a power grid, a power grid of thought. And these things are recycling over and over again until we decide to kind of turn on that consciousness that says, no, we are light beings and we have to make a choice. Are we going to continue to run with the, the negative thought patterns that are programmed into this world? Or are we going to do the harder thing, which is to be in the light and follow the themes of the light? Cute puppy break. <laughs> puppy butt, puppy butt. Feeling lost is very common, and I think because we get caught up in the chaos of this world in into the dark themes of this world, it smothers the healing light within our own selves, and we feel lost because our nature is in the light. We literally, literally are lost when we are engaging the dark themes of the world because we are not meant to be in the dark themes of the world. We are here as light beings beings of energy and bright light and if we are if we have gone off into the dark side of things then we truly do feel lost because we are not connecting with that which is our being does that make sense through my study i was listening to something and it kind of dawned on me i had an interesting thought while i was studying different dimensions. Now, I am not an expert on that. I do understand. I like to understand things in a broader scope, not so much in being able to explain every little detail of every little thing to you, but how I incorporate the bigger concepts into a workable solution for how to live your life. For other people who need those minute details, people are out there that are discussing all of those details. I'm gonna give it to you in a broader sense and also in a context and sometimes even in word pictures or analogies to help you understand the concepts because that's how I learn. When I was thinking about the different dimensions, it became very clear that the dimensions are not necessarily about a physical space because if we are light and energy 
And right now we are contained in this physical structure, but even in quantum physics, they tell you that we really aren't solid matter and actually nothing is solid. It's only vibrating to a frequency to make you think that it is. When you think about these things, we are not confined to solid form and different dimensions are not necessarily going from this solid form to another solid form. It's literally about expansion expansion so that you literally may be contained in your physical body right now but this is why we can meditate and we can have out-of-body feelings or if someone has experienced near-death experience and they see themselves rise out of their body they simply have gone into a different dimension different from the third dimension, which is what we are existing in right now. So all that really is taking place during all of these different things where we have these out-of-body experiences is literally an expansion through different portals. Our consciousness is expanding beyond this physical form and puts us into other realms, other dimensions. I had a very interesting thought. If we stepped out of our point of view from the body and let's say we went real cosmic with our point of view we stepped out of our body and we went into the cosmos and we looked down at this human experience and we saw the dark themes and we saw the light themes and we know that the human family is down there part of this human experience okay where all different forms are gathered and when I talk about forms, I talk about other original light beings or original beings that were created, which are fire, water, mineral, which is the earth, and air and gas, right? Because that's all part of it. Those are creations, the original creations, okay? And stemming off from each one of them, taking, for instance, the sun. Its creations is fire. So it's created fire. And the, the element of air has created different gases. And the creation of water is prevalent everywhere. And it comes in the form of rain and rivers and oceans. So water has created and earth, oh, lovely earth, minerals, and every form of plant life, every sort of insect, I mean, anything connected with nature, okay? So out of those four things, out of those four things, they created other beings, okay? And we, as the human family, are from water, why? Because our body, when we were born, is, what, 95% water, and then it shrinks down at, like, middle age, we're probably 70, 75%. My statistics are definitely going to be off. <laughs> so if you want exact statistics on the water makeup of our body, definitely you want to get your facts straight. Um, I highly recommend that you read the book, Messages in Water, by Marasu Emoto. Marasu Emoto, I believe I said that right, but it's called The Messages in the Water, and this is where you will get your facts on our water makeup and what happens with water. But we are creations of water, and we are interacting with fire and with air and with the minerals. We are, we are a being of water interacting with other beings that were created, and here we are. Now you take all of that and say you pull yourself back very far into the cosmos to be a witness to what's going on. And I had a thought, it was very interesting thought. If we look at the themes of the, of the light and the themes of the dark that run rampant in our, our world, themes of the light are empowerment, healing, love, if we stepped back and we looked at all of these things from a cosmic view, 
if we stepped back and looked at this entire experience that we're having on the planet as a cell, like a cell that's in our body. So we see the earth experience as a body of cells. And we see the dark themes of the world, the chaos, the unworthiness, the disempowerment, the feeling of loss, the chaos, the violence. If we saw those things as a virus and we saw that the theme patterns of the light as being the healthy cells that are actively trying to rise up. They're trying to rise up and create an immunity for this entire experience that we're having here. That's what's really going on. And so it is important for you to see the long view of what is really going on here. We tend to get caught up in our day-to-day -day life. There's something bigger happening here. There's a bigger choice to be had. And if we are going to help others awaken, if we are going to be resolution therapists, where we are helping people awaken to their divinity, their divinity, where they have the power to be in the light, understand how divine they are, that they can take all of this internal light and have any experience that they want. And not only that, but they can add to the immunity, that they can add to the collective light being's immunity to the virus, which is the dark themes of this life. That is extremely powerful. And you, as a resolution therapist, need to understand that within your own self and that you have to choose that within your own self. You have to be aware that we are living in patterns. And you also have to be aware of the four initial creators and what we are. That we are light beings and we are endowed with the light and that we are water creations. Isn't that amazing? Have you ever even heard that before? <laughs> this is really amazing stuff. And when you study the messages in water and you see how the water is affected, you are going to be amazed at how water is affected and how it interacts with the experience that you are having on this planet as it relates to the dark themes and the themes of the light. I wrote an article on how water is affected in our body and why that is really important, but this is a bigger theme to understand and these are harder concepts, so don't just breeze through this. Watch this a couple times, do more research, read the book. I'm going to attach the article that I wrote in regards to water and how we are affected by that, by the things that are being said, by the things that we are surrounding ourselves with because we are beings of light, because we know we are energy. We are light beings. This energy is what we are. Scientifically, the science understands that we are made up of energy. Science also understands that we really aren't solid if you look at quantum physics. Okay, the science is out there and scientifically we know that we are comprised of mostly water. So this is not some kind of fantasy that I'm talking to you about. We also know from another scientist, which I just told you about, the messages in water, Mr. Emoto. He is also a scientist who studied water and also made the connection to the water within us and what that is doing to us based on his findings of him subjecting water to all sorts of positive and negative things and what happened to the water. So it's very interesting stuff. So this is not sci-fi. This is literally what is being studied or has been studied and this is what we know, okay? So, when I told you that the world is weirder than we think it is, I meant it. <laughs> 
but have fun with it. Don't be scared of it. Engage it, study it. Listen to this video over and over again because I'm telling you these concepts are not easy to understand and this is why resolution therapy is the next level of the combination and the culmination of every healing modality that you have already studied. This is going to a whole other level. So understand it, take your time with it, delve deep into it, go outside of this resource and start listening to other people. I highly recommend that you listen to Matthias on initiation from Gaia. Matthias de Stefano is his name and he has a course on Gaia called initiation. I've only heard bits and pieces of him, but it are, it resonated with me. He's somebody that's already speaking my language. So I understood just the bits and pieces that I've heard him talk about. There are so many people that you can get information from, but I highly recommend that you, when you listen to this, begin to broaden it out. You also have Renegade of Light. This is a book that I have attached in this course that you can also study and you can get as deep as you want to into that course. But there are many different beings of light on this planet who have different stories. I tend to focus on the healing aspect of it and the connection that I have with you and helping you get through this life because Pleiadians are a race of healers. That's what they're here to do and that's what I'm here to do. And chances are that's what you are here to do. Now you may connect with a different form. You may connect with a different race. You may have a knowingness that you feel connected to something and you're not quite sure what it is yet it will be revealed to you as you begin to study more and more. So with that being said, I want you to really take this in and maybe even listen to it several times, go back to it as you go through the course again and come back because what I've taught you here is really profound and they are deep concepts that are not easy to stick. Our brain in this consciousness, because we are being inundated by the darker theme patterns of this world, it causes us to kind of fall asleep to it and only maintain the basic awareness of the light. This stuff requires reinforcement. So listen to it over and over again. Take notes the next time you listen to it. Read your notes so that you understand. Bullet point the things that you really connect with and adapt them into your training and how you do your healing with other people and also the knowledge that you give to other people in a way that they can understand it. That's part of this work. Not everyone that you see as a client is going to be able to take in the depth of knowledge in the way that you're getting it right now. So part of the challenge is how do I word this in a way that makes these teachings palatable and also understandable to someone who is in their elementary stage of understanding and how they can implement these teachings into their own life. If you give it to everybody in the way I'm giving it to you right now, a lot of people will just, they can't absorb it and it will just in through one and out through the other. Even with you being enlightened, it's going to be tough for you to maintain the knowledge of that. That's why I say making notes, read your notes, listen to this many times over. Do outside study, write notes on everything that you learn and incorporate that into your teachings. No matter what you do for uh, work, for healing, even if you're not in the healing industry and you are interacting with other people, you are a healer. Your life is touching so many other lives and what you are able to impart to other people is helping them. Whether you have a certificate to heal or whether you are just hugging people and comforting people that you meet along the way. So take this in. This has been a lot. I would say you might even want to stop and for the rest of the day just think about the things that I've said here. And after this when you come back, we will go into the next section, which is going to be talking about the DNA function and the knowing code. I'll see you in the next one.